So my talk is about Wagtail Guide. My name is Koen van der Kamp and I work at 4Digits. And 4Digits is a, a Python shop and we work with Django and Wagtail and um, most of our Python application run in the browser. So I'm a Python developer. I'm also a Wagtail core team member. And I'm also uh, the organizer, organizer of Wagtail Space in the Netherlands. And um, here's a big announcement. Um, Wagtail Space NL is, is happening. The conference is 15th to 17th of June, and we'll have a, a full event with sprints and talks. And you can also sign up for talks only. So um, wagtail.space is uh, the website that lists all Wagtail Space events, and uh, 2022 is uh, the Dutch version. I will share the link. No worries. First, look at my talk, and after that, uh, sign in for our event. So uh, back to Wagtail Guide. The uh, initial idea is a user guide for content editors and documentation on how to use your uh, Wagtail site. That's the, the output. And um, I like it to be an installable package that um, Python shops like ourselves can use and have documentation uh, to present to our clients. So not only send uh, login credentials and URL, but also have a document that uh, the client can read to get started. So the I, initial idea was born in uh, during a sprint at Torchbox in Bristol, UK in 2020. And um, the idea got shelved. I forgot about it. And then recently um, there was a discussion about the editor's guide as a separate repository or website. Um, and then I thought I have to revise uh, my ID and uh, look it up, see if it's still uh, something we can use. So if you don't know the Wagtail Editor's Guide, it's this section in the Wagtail documentation, and um, it's the wall of text. <laughs> so is my product a, re um, a replacement for uh, the Editor's Guide? No, it is not. It's intended as a package for in your own Wagtail site. It's intended for your clients. It's intended to be uh, a getting started uh, tutorial or how to guides. Um, it's in no means um, trying to be complete and explain everything about Wagtail. Can it be used to uh, help building this new section of the Wagtail documentation? Yeah, maybe it might be useful. So um, yeah. I'm, reiterating myself, um, installable package, getting started or tutorial, and the how to dot, dot, dot is, um, yeah, you can fill that in yourself. Um, it's intended to uh, give you the tool to make your own how to guide. guide. The targeted audience are uh, content editors, people who get started with Wagtail, and uh, moderators and administrators that have to do more complex things, maybe, but uh, not that much. So in this talk, I'm gonna show you how to install the package and then uh, configure it. Um, also how you can customize it. And there's a dotted line because um, you don't have to customize if you like how it is, you can use it like that. If you want to extend it or change something, you can, there's the possibility to do that. And then um, the product Wagtail Guide uh, has a built output but you still have to use that output yourself. You have to serve it or uh, yeah, do something useful with it. So right to guide. Um, let's look at the output. This is um, um, Markdown uh, MK docs, Markdown uh, docs. And um, it has here the, the instructions how to log in and it made a screenshot of a, a Wagtail site and filled in the fields. Also highlighted the element that you have to click. So all this uh, stuff you can define and then uh, it makes screenshots and, uh, and shows it. The default, this is the default, will give you this uh, getting started guide and also a demo page with all the elements you can create, like paragraphs, ordered and unordered list, code, images of cats, screenshots with the browser or screenshot without the browser and also highlight an element. So let's dive a little bit deeper and go to the code. To install it, you have to just pip install Wagtail guide. 
it's not on PyPI yet, but um, if you go to the GitHub page, uh, it has the instruction how you can install from GitHub. And uh, then you've got Wagtail Guide included. And um, this makes you uh, give gives you a command, a management command, the build guide. And if I do this, it makes um, a database and starts up your browser and takes some screenshots. And uh, this output of, of this all goes into the documentation directory and you've got images and also uh, the markdown. So you've got the demo page and uh, an index page. Um, yes, next. I've got something on the screen. Okay, um, you can also define uh, chapters for your guide. And um, one of those is uh, home getting started. No, let, 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 let's refer that. Um, let's customize the site first. So I've got here a base HTML of uh, the Wagtail admin, and it overrides the branding icon, the logo. And um, I've got also a Wagtail hooks uh, file, and I uh, register an element cars. And then in, um, yeah, this. So if I run the guide now, this will take a moment. Open up a browser again. Let me change one more thing. Markdown Docs has this uh, definition of how which chapters are there and how they look. And you can change that quite easily. And if I now go back to the documentation, it changed. The look is different. I've got getting started. I also have my icon and also got my car menu. So now the documentation is about my site. Let's go to base again. And now I've got here uh, a home guide getting started. This is a callable that um, you can use to um, define your own uh, guide, what it should do. So we've got a markdown factory. It generates the index uh, markdown file. The title of this page is getting started. And documentation, first paragraph is this. And then there's a heading. and. Um, a list and here I create some content a user is created and with a live server I go to a login URL and fill in the username and the password and then find the login button and click it and uh, after that um, I don't want the rest of my default uh, guide I want to, to show that there's an edit bird in the front end of the site so I navigate to the front end to the root URL and uh, I'll highlight the edit bird. And then I also click the edit bird and um, you see that the menu opens. So let's do this. Again, the database is created, browser is open, screenshots are taken and uh, documentation is updated. So now we've got the front end with the highlight of the edit bird and the menu open. So the output now is markdown, but these factories that create the documentation can also be something else. They could also create a restricted text RST or uh, anything else. And um, then I thought of, hey, maybe we can also create video. So I've got now vector guide video getting started. And um, let's see what this does. Again, database created, sites run. 
screenshots are taken. And this takes a little bit more processing. So um, there's text to speech and now it starts creating the video. So we can all look at the progress bar, but we can also look at Wacto guide code, which is, might be a little bit more interesting. So this is build guide management command. It calls PyTest. And uh, the way it works is that uh, the main test gets a live server and a driver. The driver is the thing that controls the browser and some settings. And here we just call each Wacto guide chapter setting um, as a callable, we import the string and we call it with the live server and the driver. And with that, um, it calls everything you configure in your settings. So uh, this finished, I have now a video file. And um, yeah, let's see uh, how it looks. <laughs> Open a browser and go to slash admin. Enter your username and password. Click sign in. Welcome to the administrative interface or admin for short. This first page is called the dashboard. It shows a summary. The gray bar on the side is the sidebar. Wherever you are, you can always click the logo to navigate back to the dashboard. Use search to find content. The main navigation contains pages, images, and documents. In reports, you will find an audit trail and other reports. In settings, you can manage users and configure your site. Manage your personal details and preferences in the account settings menu. The logout option is in account settings. This was my talk about uh, the Wagtail user guide, Wagtail guide, and I'm happy to answer any questions. You couldn't hear it, but there was uh, tons of applause in the actual room. That was a very, very cool demo, Cohen. Um, and we did have one question that start uh, off the top. Um, wanted to know more about your uh, development process and the code behind how this works. Yes, um, I can show a little of that. Um, first of all, uh, there are some ingredients. Of course, you saw me run the management command and uh, behind the scene, it just runs tests. So it's PyTest. And uh, we also created content with fixtures. There's this live server and Selenium. Selenium is a Chrome driver that controls the browser and that takes the screenshots. Um, and the output is then marked down. The static site builder itself that I showed isn't included. It's like the, the, um, an external package. And all that combined is the user guide. And I can show some code because I, I showed it really, really quick. Um, PyTest, you can just call with um, a location and directory. And then it runs all the tests in that, that directory. So here I look up the current directory of this installed package and um, look up all, all the tests who are there. And there's just one test, there's one main test. And this test um, looks up the chapters and calls the chapters one by one. And the chapter like that is this, the getting started, it receives the live server and the driver and we've got the markdown factory. And this factory is a context manager. The context manager works in, um, uh, when you call it with the with statement. Um, I think a lot of people do this when they open up files. You are sure if you open up a context manager, an action is run when, when all the, the indent stops and the, and the code block closes. So I've got here this doc and uh, I just write all these elements to this document. And I'll have to look at the markdown factory. 
Can I jump to that? Nope. Um, let's take the video. I don't know the way in my own code. Factories, here we go. So the markdown factory, when you enter it, it returns itself. And when you exit it, it opens up a file, which is and writes to this file name. The South file name is, is something that it got on the init. And then it just starts writing the code blocks. And every code block, like a, a, a heading, is just a piece of text. So the markdown for a heading is uh, two signs and the content. And um, all these blocks are just stored here in the, on the context manager. And when you close it, it's written to a file. And the same is for a video, only the processing in the end is a little bit more complex. On exit, it just creates a video file um, and, and creates the audio with text to speech. So that was a long answer. Maybe there are other questions. Thanks so much. Do we have more questions in the audience or on Zoom? Have you ever tried to set this up with some type of update um, in the second half automation. and some type of automation? Mm, not sure if I understand the correct uh, the question. The the automation of the of the of creating the script. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, there's uh, Selenium browser plugins that you can use to uh, record your action in the in the screen. And the and the way I use it right now is uh, most of the times I just set a breakpoint somewhere in the code and then uh, run the test and then I get the breakpoint in the browser. The browser just stops there and then I can inspect the HTML and um, just type in my terminal the instructions that I want to try out. So uh, that's the way I work currently, uh, but I can, I imagine that uh, recording your actions in the browser is uh, perfectly fine. If it out outputs uh, the selects that you need, um, then you're halfway there. Awesome. And we're also interested in automation on updating. Um, anytime it updates, could there be a integration of the process to, to update the documentation every time there's an update? Yes, that's a good question. I didn't figure that out uh, yet because uh, I just worked to, uh, against the current stable branch. But I imagine that uh, I will release packages uh, with the same version as Wagtail. So every time Wagtail updates, there's a new release of Wagtail Guide, and then uh, all the selects are updated to fit the new Wagtail. And uh, yeah, that's a way to get around it. So then you can run the management command again against your updated site and you just get new documentation. Thank you. Do we have any more questions from in the audience or on Zoom? We have time for about two more questions. I can go slow so I can repeat it. <laughs> Is there a wagtail guide for setting up wagtail guides? Where do we go? No. <laughs> the documentation on the documentation generator is not there yet. Uh, I created this a month ago and I worked on it two days ago, seven days ago, and that's about it. Um, there's a, a comprehensive readme and it will get you started with everything uh, you need. Um, so it, that, that's some documentation, but I, I would love to create a documentation site that also showcases uh, the output and also the instructions of working with Vector Guide itself. But that's on my to-do list.
It's hard to describe how excited the room was. I mean, everyone, I just really appreciate that. So more to do as there always is, but this is fantastic uh, talk. I think we can probably take uh, maybe one more uh, question. If anyone in the room or, or on Zoom has one. Yeah, uh, I would like to say that uh, pull requests and contributions are welcome. So uh, if you're if you uh, enthusiastic about this and you can see some use for it in your own company, and to help your own clients, uh, yeah, contribute. Uh, I have two two questions. Is the text to speech available in languages other than English? Um, I use the text to speech from Mozilla, and uh, they have Spanish and some other languages. I don't uh, think they have uh, Dutch, but they have, they have a few languages. Uh, yeah. So um, not only English, but I don't know which languages they provide. <laughs> but basically you, you could adapt um, the um, generators themselves to use something else. I now run a, document a Docker container to handle the text to speech. Um, yeah, it would be easy to uh, run it against some other tool to get your audio files. Awesome. We have one more. Uh, are there any plans to start to submit maybe Wagtail 3 or Wagtail 2? Are there any plans to start using this, for example, in Wagtail 3? Um, what I would like to have uh, in Wagtail is a, a menu item that you can click and then see your own documentation. Um, so I would say it would should work in any um, Wagtail version. Um, yeah, I, I intend also to update the package when the new uh, Wagtail release is there. So um, yeah, it will work in Wagtail 3. So this is the last talk before lunch. And so if you wanted to continue to have more conversations about this really awesome package or this talk, um, feel free to chat on Slack. Um, and I'm going to uh, bring up Tim and, and Vince to, to chat a little we more. We just have you. one small thing. <laughs> Thanks so much, Cohen. Round of applause for Cohen. That was amazing. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>